This is the Samsung Galaxy F56 5G disassembly. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and click on notification bell so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. Also, if you need any tools, there are links in the description. We'll start off by removing the SIM tray. Looking at the SIM tray, we can see a blue rubber gasket around the opening. At this point, heat needs to be applied to the back plate using either a hairdryer or a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive underneath, and then a pry tool can be used to pry the back plate off. I prefer to use a hairdryer since there's less of a chance of damaging any of the components inside by overheating them. Here's a better look at the glass back plate. The glass camera lens covers are held down with some adhesive, so if you needed to replace those, just apply some heat and gently pry those off. At this point, 15 Phillips screws need to be removed. Now a plastic pry tool needs to be placed in between the back housing and the screen and run along the edges to pop off the back housing. The back housing is made of plastic. The NFC antenna is located here, and there are two additional antenna flex cables. We see more antenna flex cables on the other side, as well as graphite film to help transfer heat. These two flex cables connect the main board to the subboard. This flex cable is for the screen, and this one is for the fingerprint scanner. So if you needed to replace the screen, at this point all you would have to do is disconnect the flex cable for the screen, you then heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, pry the old screen off, apply new adhesive and reapply the new screen making sure you run the flex cable back to the opening in the midframe and reassemble the phone. The battery cable can now be disconnected, followed by the rest of the cables. The main board is held down with a single Phillips screw. Looking at the main board, we can see the 8 megapixel ultra wide lens, the 50 megapixel primary, and the 2 megapixel macro lens. The main camera is the only one with OIS or optical image stabilization. There's a secondary microphone on the top corner and the flex cables for the cameras can be disconnected by just popping them off. On the other side, we have a better look at the 12 megapixel front facing camera, the proximity and ambient light sensor, the SIM reader, the connectors for the other cameras, as well as a graphite pad on the back shield to help transfer heat. Once the graphite pad has been peeled back, we can see thermal pads on top of these chips, as well as the processor. Here's a better look with the thermal pad removed. There's a single Phillips screw holding down the bottom speaker. Here's a better look at the speaker. There is one more Phillips screw holding on the subboard. Looking at the subboard, we see a rubber gasket around the charger port, as well as these connectors, and the primary microphone is located here. Here's a look at the other side. The vibrator motor and fingerprint scanner are held on with some adhesive, so if you want to replace those, just apply some heat and gently pry them off. Now moving on to the battery, there's a pull pouch holding the battery in place, which can be peeled off at the areas labeled with the arrows.
This is the 5000 milliamp hour battery. Now that the adhesive pouch has been peeled off, we have a better look at the copper vapor chamber which runs underneath the battery as well as the motherboard. This is the flexible for the volume keys and power button which can be replaced by peeling it off. And the top earpiece speaker is located here which is held down with some adhesive. There are also two liquid damage indicator stickers which are these white stickers, one of which is located on the frame underneath the sim reader and another one located underneath the subboard. When it comes to this phone, for anyone who's worried about accidentally inserting a SIM ejector tool in the wrong hole, you don't need to worry since both the filters and the microphones are seated above the holes so they wouldn't get damaged. For the repairability score on this phone I give it a 9 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything's back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply the back cover. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.